Hey everybody, this is Brian at Obedia, and today I'm going to show you how to export your audio mix down from Cakewalk's Sonar X1 digital audio workstation. And this is real easy to do, so let's jump right into it. This is pretty much going to be the same uh, also on previous versions of Sonar. I'm working in X1, but you should be able to follow along in the previous iterations as well. So I have a project here and I've imported a couple loops and uh, I want to export a mix down of the audio that I have in my project here. Now before I do this I need to select what I'm going to export. Now this is going to happen in a few different ways. Um, one of the first is that if you only want specific tracks to be sent out to your mix down you want to solo those tracks. If you want to get all the tracks, you want to make sure that you don't have anything soloed or muted or anything like that. Then we want to take a look in our arrangement view here. And in the arrange view, uh, we have a couple different ways of deciding what we want to be in our audio mix down. Now the first is that if we simply uh, leave waveforms unselected and we decide to export audio, then uh, Sonar is going to export all of the audio uh, from beginning to end that it sees in your project. Now if you want to export specific things, uh, tracks and regions and things like that, you can take a look here on the ruler and what you can do, take your mouse, click and drag and select an area and you're going to notice that I get the selection here in this gray area. Now what this is going to do is it's going to select how much of the timeline I want to export. However, this is also dependent on what tracks I've selected in my, in my project. So you'll notice that uh, my first track right here, there's no selected gray area. That's because if I scroll down here to my secondary track, you're going to notice that this gray area is now matching up with the ruler selection that I did. The reason for that is that I've selected the track over here uh, in my track inspector. And I'll show you what happens if I click on the number two right here, I get that gray selection area. Now if I also select uh, my first track, that'll turn gray. If I want to select multiple tracks, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and select multiple tracks. And now you notice that this gray area is spanning across multiple tracks and covering the region here that I've selected. So this is the way that I can choose to uh, export a specific region and then this will also affect the tracks that I export. So this takes me then into exporting the audio and to do that I select file and I go export and audio. So now I'm in the audio export dialog box and there's going to be a few ways that I can export audio. One of the first things I want to take a look at here is the bounce settings source category. If I click on this pull down, I have options for entire mix, main outputs, buses, and tracks. If I select tracks, this is going to show me the tracks that I've selected in my uh, arrangement view there. And so you're going to notice that the two tracks I have selected, they're also showing up right here. So that means that they will be exported. So any tracks that are not selected won't show up in this list. Now I can do the entire mix by just selecting entire mix. And what this will do is do a mix down of every track that is active in my project. I also have the option for buses if I want to simply bounce my buses down and um, and then I can also select my main outputs and main outputs will also bounce uh, any audio that is going out through my main outputs so that would include buses and FX sends and things like that so that's one thing that you want to take a look at you also want to set your channel format if you want to do mono stereo or split mono mono of course will give you a mono mix stereo will be a stereo mix and split mono will give you a left and a right output of your project that you are working with Set your sample rate. If you're going uh, to mastering, you're probably going to want to stay somewhere where around 48 uh, kilohertz or maybe a little higher if possible. If you're going to CD, you can go to 44.1 kilohertz. This is the same for bit depth. If you're going to still be mixing this uh, song in some various ways, mastering it, you'll want to keep your bit depth somewhere between 24 and 32. That's because you're going to get more headroom for doing your mixing and um, that makes it a little easier to mix in most audio workstations. However, if you're going out to a CD, if this is your last mix, you probably want to select 16-bit. So I'm going to stick with CD quality right here. 
Dithering, you can leave it re rectangular, triangular if you want. If you don't know what dithering is, dithering essentially adds a little bit of noise to your final mix down to compensate uh, for some of the digital noise that can uh, be created in any form of digital audio. And uh, so you probably won't notice a lot of the effects of dithering, but usually rectangular or triangular dithering will treat you just fine. Now finally here I have the option uh, for preset. If I click here on preset, there's a lot of different presets that I have access to. Um, and these are all going to affect what I'm going to get out of my mix. So raw tracks, raw tracks with no automation, um, what I hear, um, and then you know, what you hear live input, real-time audibles. So there's a lot of different ways that you can export your mix down here. I usually just select all because I want to get my entire mix mixed down. But if you want to be very specific about what you're going to hear, you can use a preset or you can here in the mix enable section take a look and you can disable or enable some of the various features that you have access to. Now the last thing that you can do, of course, this is where you're going to take a look at files of type. And this is where you're going to choose what kind of a file you are going to export to. Your most common ones are going to be WAV and MP3. Uh, however, you also may find that you want to go to AIFF or another different file format. That is where you can choose what file format you would like to use. Now one thing I should mention about exporting to MP3, which of course is a very popular format to export to, is if you select MP3 you need to unlock the MP3 exporter uh, for Cakewalk, and this can be done via Cakewalk site. It's an additional uh, add-on which you add on to Sonar. If you choose not to do that, you can simply export to WAV and then convert your WAV file to an MP3 using a program of your choice. When you're all done with all of this, just go ahead and give yourself a file name and choose where to save that file. Click on export and your file is going to be exported to wherever you might choose to save it on your hard drive. And that's it. That's how easy it is to do an audio export in Sonar X1 and in previous versions of Sonar. I hope that this has been useful to you guys. As always, please keep in touch with me. My email is brian at obedia.com. And you can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obediatutor. And until next time, thanks for watching and happy music making to you.